All right, it's my pleasure to introduce Kevin Kovitz. Um, Kevin is the executive director of the thoracic uh, service line at University of Illinois Professor of Medicine. He's going to go through quickly just how the RUC survey and the new codes are created. All right, wh while he's setting that up, I'll make uh, two comments. One, um, Kim went through it quickly, but for those of you putting chest tubes in over a wire, rather than the finger in. Think of it, the standard ch old fashioned chest tube is the finger in, and if you're doing it over a wire, it's the catheter. So it's those other codes, it's those catheter codes, it's either with or without image guidance, and that's how you can tell the difference between them. The other comment I'll make is when Scott said we were all rock stars, I thought he meant that we were all over the hill, drug addled, and, 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 and no longer functional, and it may be true, but anyhow. Um, I bet I've been insulted by better people. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do the five-minute versions because the barbarians are at the gate trying to get in, and I will be happy. To, first of all, you'll have all these slides, and I'll be happy to mingle and answer questions. So basically, how, how, does, how does a code get established, and how does it get paid? Uh, the RUC process and surveys. Uh, thanks to Scott for loaning some of the slides, and I am Chess alternate representative to the RUC. What is the RUC? Uh, so it's the AMA Specialty Society's relatively, Relative Value Scale Update Committee. And I put the website for that. Uh, and basically, everything about CPT, um, the whole process is owned by AMA. It's all copyrighted. You can't just sort of run off and create your own CPT codes. Um, the caveats. Never apply logic to the process, okay? You start applying logic, you'll, you'll frustrate yourself, you'll beat your head against the wall, and you won't be functional. Uh, fairness, it's, the way I think of it is the whole process, Ruck is not your friend, but it's too big to be your enemy. And basically, our job is to minimize the hurt, okay? Think of it as you've given someone a chronic diagnosis of a debilitating disease, and you learn to manage it, okay? You don't cure it. Uh, in terms of feeling valued, you have to look for feeling valued in other aspects of your life. Uh, you may be frustrated, move on from it. Uh, it can be, the whole process is burdensome, but you got to make the best of it. Uh, we have to question whether we should be RVU based in our reward system. I think pure interventional pulmonologists within settings that are purely RVU based in reimbursement will not survive and you have to look for alternate methods, and charge, as Scott talked about, is not equal reimbursement. People like to charge a lot. There were many reasons given. Some of it is ego. Oh, I'm a very good doctor, so I should charge $10 billion for what I do, as opposed to the next guy who can only charge $5 billion. Uh, so charge is not equal reimbursement. Uh, basically, you go to the website. You'll, they'll give you a process. It's a multi-step, multi-year process for a CPT code to be developed and valued. Uh, the members of the committee uh, are extensive. You'll see this list, but note it's heavily surgically weighted. And within medicine, it's heavily cardiology weighted. So basically, nobody cares about the pulmonologists. Okay? So we do the best we can, and we work hard towards work doing the best we can. We are represented well by members from ATS and from ACCP, and by members who have been through the process. So we work hard to establish values as best we can. We are on your side. It's just we're, we're it's a little Sisyphean. I'll try to spell that later after a few drinks. Um, there are also, the, there are many codes, it's a five-digit code developed by the AMA, spans every conceivable procedure, that's what the P is uh, for it. Uh, it's supplemented by what are called the HICS-PICS codes, basically the codes that look at the supply cost for these procedures. Um, you want to propose a new code, uh, is, you need a lot of questions addressed before you get there. Is it performed by a, a, is this a unique thing performed by many uh, uh, physicians? What specialties? The more specialties that do it, probably the better. Is it new? Is it clinically effective and is that established? How are they currently reported? Why is the current reporting system inadequate? Is it bundled with anything else? Is there an ENM the same day? Uh, we create a representative vignette describing the code. And that's what's typical. The codes sometimes are used for atypical manner, but it's what's typical that gets described. 
what are the diagnoses, what are the volume estimates of what will be done, and then you need five peer-reviewed articles in a U.S. journal. Right? It has to be American articles. It can be brilliant science from Japan or Europe or anywhere else. It can be the best science ever, Nobel Prize worthy. It doesn't count. Um, so this is how it happens. Basically, uh, the societies come up with a, uh, an idea, usually approached by industry, sometimes internal to the society, realizing that something we're doing is not valued. Uh, it gets proposed to the CPT, a kind of procedural terminology panel. If it gets through that, then it starts getting valued by the RUC committee. The values are uh, gotten at by uh, comparing it to uh, established values, by surveying members who, pro who provide these uh, services to what would be typical in terms of time, complexity, risk to the patient, and the practice expense gets placed in, and that's a very cumbersome process. Uh, thank you to Scott for, for managing that. I mean, it, it goes down to the pennies on an Excel spreadsheet that will blind the average person. But it, we work through it. CMS is involved in the sense that they're sitting in at the meeting and there's a tendency, we value a code, we come up with an idea, we say this is what our members survey suggests it should be valued. We typically think about proposing the 50th percentile, but much like people are afraid to overcode for E&M services, as we present these, we tend to ratchet down to 25th percentile because that's the subtle pressure. That's what tends to get accepted. Medicare is sitting at the table, so that pressure still exists. And then Medicare does whatever the hell it wants. Okay. The bottom line is it's a, it's a, um, it, ha it is a zero-sum game. And so if we take something from one place, it gets replaced elsewhere, et cetera. And then the whole third party fee schedule, which are totally separate. Uh, basically, you're putting in the physician level of work, the thinking through the process, the, um, uh, the complexity of the patient, the risk to the patient, uh, and then you're surveying people who practice and what they're doing, and you're coming up with part of this interest service work analysis. Uh, then there's a practice expense. I'm not going to go into that. It's a multi, multi-level process. But basically, it goes down to, you know, how much does an EBIS needle cost? Uh, you know, how much does a package of, uh, of gauze cost, et cetera? Uh, then it's, this is what Scott showed earlier. Basically, you have a dollar value that's established by what the RVU is. And going into the RVU is the phys physician work. The practice expense, the malpractice cost, it's geographically different, so there's a multiplier. Every year, the RVU comes out with some number. It's 35-something dollars, and then you multiply that by the RVU set, and that's what you get, but there's a geographic uh, uh, change. And then there's a conversion factor for budget neutrality. Uh, example of thermoplasty, we first start talking about in about 2007, uh, ATS, ACCP, other groups meeting with industry, uh, knew there would be new technology. 2010, uh, the CPT application got submitted, uh, time for the 2011 FDA approval. Uh, CPT editorial panel in 2011 created a category three code, which is a tracking code. It's just seeing if the, if the procedure is offered and how often doesn't get paid, it's just seeing if it's tracked. Uh, sometimes people use a, um, a generic code, but that really is not very effective. Um, and basically, by 2012, uh, we were getting to the point of an actual Category 1 code being uh, developed. There was a decision in 2012 to make it a Category 1, uh, uh, January 1st, 13. There was a survey in 2012, and you, you'll get surveys randomly chosen by people who do this. When you get these surveys, answer them. It's very important. That's how we value these things, and that's how we have data to support the work involved. Then, then a final rule comes out. It gets implemented by CMS on that start date, although there are local carriers for CMS which may delay it a little further as they're thinking it through. And there's certainly a delayed process of industry, sorry, of, of the commercial carriers uh, saying, hey, we may not pay for this. For example, thermoplasty, there was several years of carriers saying it's still experimental. Experimental from a carrier perspective does not mean it's not FDA approved. It can be FDA approved, it can be the best thing since sliced bread. They call it experimental because they want to, and they can deny payment based on that. And it takes lobbying by your groups, 
uh, lobbying locally with your carriers to get them finally paid for. Uh, we got the codes, and um, basically, it's what we talked about uh, a minute ago. On your slide, you'll see the activity of the members of the RUC, uh, or the representatives to RUC from ATS and ACCP. Many things were changed. You'll just see them on your slides. You can find them on the website. There's a listing going all the way through 2016, and the most recent stuff are the EBIS stuff. Coming down the road will be moderate sedation things, but I'd need too much to drink right now to really go through moderate sedation. I'd need to be moderately sedated, and I'm not even a drinker, uh, so we'll move on from that another time. Surveys are crucial. You get them, fill them out, um, and this is not Long Island. Not everything's 20 minutes away, okay? When you answer the code, answer it. Everybody answers, oh, it takes me 20 minutes. It takes me five minutes. Don't undervalue what you do, okay? It is very important to be, um, reflect the typical and be thoughtful in your answers. On this is just an example of a survey you might get. Again, what's typical, it's not a reimbursement thing. You're comparing it to existing codes. So Bronx start at a very low level. So you're either going to be a little bit up or a little bit down from that. You're never going to be compared to uh, aortic valve replacement. I wish we were, but we're never going to be compared. It's not important to breathe, remember. From a value perspective, breathing is not important. Um, okay, let me go quickly through, and a lot of people involved in this process. I've been on uh, as the RUC uh, alternate uh, for one year, although involved in the process for many years as a technical expert, but we have people who have been involved more than 20 years really fighting for you. So people are fighting for you and your reimbursement. Uh, long process, it's not optimal. The only take home thing here from an interventional pulmonary procedure perspective, I think you all need to approach with your practices, whether academic or private, alternate payment models in the community and alternate payment models within your practice or institution. If your hospital or practice has shifted to rewarding you based on RVUs, they're disvaluing, it's not a word, they're undervaluing, they're disincentivizing you and they're undervaluing what you do. What you do is important, it just can't be purely RVU based in terms of interpreting that. And I hope I did that fast enough because we had limited time, but again, I'm here to chat with anybody and my emails are on the system so you can reach out to me at any time. Thank you. This is uh, complex stuff, so uh, we appreciate all the effort that you guys do, uh, and just for you to understand how difficult it is to get a new code. 